Hmm. Joe Biden saying he's ready to visit Ukraine, just like UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson and so many other real leaders have done. But it appears that Joe Biden doesn't make the calls in his White House. Here to weigh in is former Brexit party leader and host of Nigel on the UK's GB News. Nigel Farage, great to see you, sir. You know, Jen Psaki, one of Joe Biden's handlers, sent by Obama, says despite Biden's claims, Biden will not be going to Ukraine. Watch this. So what he's I, ready. He's just not like... He is ready. He's ready for anything. The man likes a fast car, some aviators. He's ready to go to Ukraine. No, that is not in the plans for the president of the United States. We should all be maybe relieved about that. Nigel, when foreign allies like you hear unelected people like Jen Psaki claim that unnamed folks are not sending Joe Biden, revealing he's not in charge, what goes through your mind? Uh, why is there not a call the 25th Amendment to be invoked in America. The man clearly is not up to the job. He's an embarrassment, not just to America, but to the whole of the free world. Uh, the truth of it is, a real leader would have gone not just to Brussels, to NATO on the first week of this war. He would have gone, or she would have gone, to Ukraine. And the really brave leader, the really brave leader, would have gone to Moscow. Would have gone to Moscow and wow. said, we, as America, want to negotiate a peace. Truth of it is, this man is not up to it. And that's one of the reasons why the Western world is in the peril it's in right now. It began last August with the unconditional withdrawal from Afghanistan without reference to any allies. And I've got to tell you, Chris, honestly, if my friend Donald Trump was still in the White House, none of this, and I mean none of this, would have happened. I'm forced to agree. Uh, one of your competitors in the meantime in the UK there, Piers Morgan, released a highly edited clip that shows President Trump exploding and storming out of an interview. Watch. Completely straight with you to your face. I think I'm a very honest man. Much more honest than you, actually. Really? Yeah. It was a free and fair match. You lost. Only a fool would think You think I'm a fool? I do now, yeah. With Excuse respect. me. Okay. All right. But, but even NBC is calling into question the veracity of that highly produced clip. Watch. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. That was a great interview. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Farage, first comment on the apparent deceptive editing there. Then tell us how you gave Trump the dossier that instigated that viral clip. Okay, okay, <laughs> in reverse order. Um, what we saw there, and the claim that has appeared on the front page of newspapers here in the United Kingdom, is that Donald Trump stormed out of the interview. It is fake news. Fake news. And that audio that you played proves it. The interview was over. Piers Morgan, whatever you think of him, said, thank you, that was a great interview. Trump says, yeah. And then he gets up to go and says, OK, guys, turn the cameras off. That is deception. That is fake news. That is dishonesty in journalism at a level I don't think I've ever seen in my life. He has stitched up Donald Trump. But you know something? It's no surprise to me, and I'll tell you why. Two weeks ago tonight, I was at Mar-a-Lago. I went to meet Trump to have a chat, have dinner. You know, it was a social visit. But I did knowing that Piers Morgan had this new Fox Nation show coming up, I did give Trump just a simple little two or three page dossier of all the things he'd said and written about Trump over the course of the last year or so. Now, look, Donald Trump's a busy man. He hasn't got time to read what Piers Morgan writes in the British Daily Mail. And Morgan, who for 15 years has said, look, I'm a friend of Trump's. I've got the best access of anybody in the world to Trump, actually was stabbing him in the back. And I wanted President Trump to know the truth. And that is what precipitated the bad blood. That is what led to the row. And that is what led to Morgan basically falsifying the truth at the end of this interview. I think the whole thing is disgusting. And I gotta tell you, there'll be people at your competitors tonight at Fox News, and they will be sucking their teeth. They'll be asking themselves, how on earth can we, as a station who, on the whole, 
and you know, big station, on the whole, have backed Trump. How can we have in our midst a man who is prepared to lie to him, stitch him up in public in this way? And I think the truth of it is, this creates for Rupert Murdoch's media empire a major, major problem. Mr. Farage, I think I think you're right. We haven't seen the likes of this since uh, NBC News. We have we have a lot of maybe you haven't seen the likes of this in a while, but we see this on a regular basis over here with CNN, NBC, CBS, ABC. They deceptively edit video all the time to make conservatives and Republicans look bad. We have several examples throughout history. This is a common practice among left wing media, and I'm. I'm just as shocked as you as the, the, the Fox Nation new face there, Mr. Piers Morgan, would deceptively edit a video with the full blessings of those folks. That's, that's no bueno in this, in this business. Nigel Farage, don't make it so long to the next time you come back and visit. We appreciated you being here.